Hello and welcome to the Backdoor GA Football Podcast. My name's John McMahon and today I'm joined by regular host of the show, Paul Shocknessy and former me footballer, Joe Sheridan. So today we are going to discuss all the club football weekend results and I am delighted to say this is my first uh, Backdoor Football Podcast. So uh, thanks Paul for having me. No bother at all, John. And um, I suppose, Joe, just looking at the games in the Tyrone Championship there and RT on Saturday, you'd have to say, like, two unbelievable games, really. Yeah, um, I've, been, I've been actually watching Trillic, especially over the last couple of weeks. They've been on telly and they've, they've impressed me quite a lot, to be honest. Um, you know, the quarterfinal, they were probably a wee bit lucky and they're probably quite defensive but on um on Saturday now they were extremely attacking. They moved the ball pretty quick and you know they 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 just attacked at will and when they opened them up their their forward line especially they they, they like to run from deep and uh, create an overlap with Matty Donnelly um and the other midfielder I can't remember his name but he, he actually got a goal at the weekend as well. Um so they like to do that attack at pace and um especially with Lee Brennan. He's uh, he's been someone who's very impressed me with all the games over the last couple of weeks, you know, he's free taking, especially his directness. And, uh, you know, he, he, he seems to be playing with a lot of confidence at the minute and, and they'll be hard beating. Yeah, and even Trillick, like, the, their transition is very impressive. But when you look at the inside line of the two Garrities, I know they're only young, but their movement is unreal. And Lee Brennan, you'd have to think, is surely a man who will commit to Tyrone at some stage. Yeah, you'd like to think so. You know, he's definitely got the class, um, and I, I know Tyrone are very, very lucky to have the same similar type of forwards that Lee Brennan would be. But he, he's definitely he's the form player at the minute, and any player who's who's, who's doing what he's doing at the minute should should definitely be playing with the with Tyrone, and he'll de- he'd definitely be um, a, a, an added boost to the to the squad anyway for Mickey Hart for for the coming season. Yeah, and I suppose Cole Island. Unlucky, really. Probably they weren't very accurate in front of goal. I think they hit something like ten wides. Probably cost them in the end. But Plunka Kane at midfield, he was just like a warrior. Just kept going right to the end. Long burst and runs. And Michael McKiernan from deep as well was he was unreal as well. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's got a cracker of a goal in the first half coming through from deep, and he he's, he's just what it seems like one of these club warriors who never stops, and he just keeps going, gives everything he can, and. Um, they they were probably yeah uh, they were shooting from the wrong positions probably at times or you know they were forced out we and probably that was from the way Trillip was de- were defending and trying to send them out and it was probably forcing Cold Island to take shots from positions that they probably shouldn't have been shooting from but um look it, it was a tight game as well and and they, they put it up to them right to the finish and it was um I think overall Trillip probably deserved deserved the win in the end absolutely and. This, the second game then, um, going to extra time, Ergil Kieran and Don Gannon, um, another mouthwater in um, Thai really, um, but like just unbelievable scenes with Don Gannon, the cornerback, kicking the winning score and to put his uh, club into their first county final in 34 years, like just unreal scenes really. Yeah, I'd be panicking now if my cornerback was coming up to take her at the last <laughs> kick and put it to, to get us into a championship fine, but he, he stuck it over perfectly and he obviously he's, he's well able to do it. And yeah, it's fantastic. And especially in, in them in that scenario, you know, the last kick of the ball and uh, and it, it's just fantastic scenes for, for a club um and to be able to do that and especially in the way they've done it. So yeah, it was um yeah, it was, it was tight, it was it was it was a bit tighter and a bit more cage in the other game but um yeah it was fantastic scenes at the end as well and i suppose like ergen kieran will probably look back and some really uncharacteristic phrase were missed really from peter hart which you wouldn't expect at all like yeah and he's been quiet enough in the last you know in the championship this year um yeah and usually he, he's he's 100 percent from them from from their positions and you know at the end of the day, you have to take them, no matter if you're a county player or a club player. The pressure gets the players at certain times, and, and and that could have been it. You know, you have an off day, and you have to move on with it, and get on with it. So, it's um, look, that's the way it goes, and Dungani will take that, and and they'll accept the, the their position in the final now, and and that that's all you can do on the day. You have to take your chances, and if you don't, you're you're going to be punished, and that's what happened. 
And I suppose the amazing thing for Dungannon is uh, they haven't beaten any team in normal time. They've won all of their games in extra time in the championship. But like the character is really unbelievable in this side. Like a goal in extra time, it's usually the winner. You never see sides coming back. But even when Kieran McGinley hit that goal for Ergil Kieran, there was no panic and they just kept the scoreboard ticking and it got them over the line. Yeah, and it shows great resolve to be fair from the team. Um to be able to keep doing that and keep coming back, it shows a, a, gr- a gritty determination from the whole squad to be able to keep their head. As you were saying, when the goal went in, they didn't panic. They just kept t- tipping away at them scores and, and obviously gave them a chance to win the game then. So it's it, it, it will probably stand to them, the tight games. But the only problem you would see on the flip side then is will it have taken too much out of them because obviously the games are coming quick and fast. And, um, you know, whether if they take a, take a couple of knocks, you know, lads it. You know, obviously playing extra time. You know, it's 20 minutes every game extra than uh, Trillic would be playing. So um, it, it'd be interesting to see how, how things fare out. But, you know, it, it does just show the heart in the team and how, how they keep coming back and keep coming back and never beaten. So it'd be um, it's set up for a great final now, to be fair. And um, it, it seems to be pretty open. Um, I, I'd probably side with Trillic just from, you know, the way they probably performed and over the last couple of weeks. But it's, um, yeah, it'd be an interesting final. And um, Paul Donny um, probably kicked the score of the game uh, out near the sideline outside the boot, kicked eight points, five from freeze. And I suppose with Cod McShane injured, do you think he could be a man who could be able to step up for Tyrone and get called in? Well, look, yeah, it's um, it, it's 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 not a bad complaint to have all these forwards on form. Um, there's nothing like a nice outside the boot to stick it over the ground. That's when you know players playing with confidence. If you can do that, um, you know, he feels he can do any anything and score from anywhere. So it, it's great to have that. Um, you know, eight eight points from from any player, no matter if they freeze up and play. It's, it's a great great haul in the game. So um, I'm sure Mickey will be looking at that for the for the the end of the year if it's in the county championship goes ahead. And you know, um, I'm not too sure how if Carl McShane will be back at all or will, if he'd be involved with Tyrone. Um, so it, we'll have to just wait and see. I know he's a serious injury, so. It could be um, a ready-made replacement for, for him coming forward. And John, probably you'd have to go and buy the results in the Tyrone and like Oma St. End as one of the top class clubs knocked out. You'd really have to say the Tyrone Senior Football Club Championship is probably the most competitive football championship in Ireland. Yeah, by a mile, Paul, I'm very, very impressed by it. I think the quality is always so, so good. Like, obviously, back home in Calvin here, like some of the games can be very uh, airy fairy, but the Tyrone Club Championship, it's just so competitive. The quality of football is always so, so good. And you're, you're mentioning some class acts there. And I think that maybe creates a bit of a headache for Mickey Hart to bring in some of these lads and maybe really put a put a stamp on their um, Tyrone career. And maybe bring in some lads to try them out because if Colin McShane, as you say, is injured at the minute, he might be kind of thinking, okay, there is lads knocking on the door here and I might try um, maybe speed up my recovery because uh, his base might be in doubt and uh, no, the Tyrone Club Championship was always very competitive and good and um, yeah, I'm quite jealous of it up here in Ulster. <laughs> and um, I suppose moving on to the Mayo Senior Football Championship Brafey scraping over the line against Westport, but I suppose when you're looking at Brafey, and it's probably an advantage to club before county, especially for Brafey, having all the players back, though, Shays, Maddie Ruan, Robbie Henley, um, like it's a massive boost really for clubs when you have four or five county players and you have them back, and it's it's really showing that bit of an advantage for a Brafey job. Yeah, big time, and they've been threatening over the last number of years and just haven't got over the line. Um, uh, and it's it doesn't always guarantee success. That's the thing, you know. As, as you were saying, with the county team being involved, um, usually you're you're missing probably six or seven lads then uh, for pretty much most of the year. They ride back maybe the week before championship, play a couple of league games as the year goes on, and this doesn't really bring much cohesion to a to a club setup. Um, I remember when you know, probably about ten or fifteen years ago, Navin Amani's from from the, in the Mead championship. Put I think they had eleven uh, county players on the squad at the time. But I think they only won one championship in that, in that time. So, you know, it doesn't actually guarantee anything. It can sort of disrupt as well. So, um, look, the, the types of players that they do have are fantastic. And you'd imagine that they'll, they'll sooner rather than later be able to come through and, and win that Mayo Championship. 
Yeah, and uh, Knockmore beating Valna 17 points, 13. Um, their transition from defence to attack, just unbelievable watching the game yesterday. Peter knocked him with seven points, Aidan Orr with four, Kevin McLaughlin with three. But I suppose, uh, Joe, poor Glahara's comments have probably caught up with, the man, caught up with him in the end, saying that um, they weren't going to be beaten this year and just came up short yesterday. Yeah, and I, I think um, start not more got they were like four up after a few minutes. Um, you know, there were six up at half time as well. And um, yeah, look, you can you, you can't knock a man for confidence, but at the end of the day, the other team it just drives them on, and yeah, it's probably better off just keeping the mouth shut at, at certain times and just try and get on with it and, and get the game done. But you know, with Kevin McLaughlin playing pretty well, he's he's very hard to stop at club level as well. So he's um, you know, I, I want his speed and his pace. It, at club level would be fantastic and he's very hard to stop so it's um yeah look they, they probably deserve the win and you know when you when you pull ahead and you can sort of hold out for that win um it, it does help because it's especially at conditions over the weekend um it's hard to try and get that back i know the strong winds and you know even the rain and that i know on saturday night some of the conditions were shocking for the game so it's um if you can get ahead and, and a team has to come back at you, then it opens up the game for you. So it, that that's that's what it sort of did for for not more. And um, yeah, Battle now would probably be kicking themselves. Yeah, and I suppose not more. Like one thing they've done, they do play defensive, but a bit like Dublin, they've got a basketball coach in um, to try and break down blankets and to perfect a blanket defence. And I suppose they're probably seeing the positives of it now. And I suppose. It, it does make sense, Joe, in one way, to bring in a basketball coach um, to try and to be able to break down blanket defences and then being able to master it at the other end. Yeah, it's the whole rave now, the, the basketball coach and the basketball coach. And, and I would, I'd be an advocate for it now, to be honest. Um, just your hand-eye coordination, your, your link in from defence to attack, your transition. Um, it all works the same way, just on a smaller scale. And, um, it's even... the Sort of the interaction, the link play between players and, and possession ball, and it's um it, it's very interesting how a lot of teams have jumped on board with it, and it's um it's probably going to come into a lot more teams, especially down it'll trickle down through the the clubs it's seen now over the next couple of years, I'd imagine, and we can obviously all, all, already see that happening, so it's um it's going to be interesting, and yeah, look, I, I I think most sports can actually work that way if you can bring any type of sport into Gaelic and try and use whatever benefits you can from that. Um, to to your advantage, I, I don't see any problem with that. And um, at the end of the day, it's all about trying to get that result and winning, and it's um, it's obviously working. Exactly. And I, then just touching back on Brave here, John, like playing Aidan O'Shea at club level at the edge of the square with the new rules, he's just really causing havoc. Like, yeah, like it's gonna uh, release the uh, men against boys. He's an absolute. Um, he is a colossus of a man, and I think he even causes wreck when it comes to county as well. So if you're going to throw a lad like that in, in club football against maybe some, I don't know, 20, 21-year-old fullback, he is just going to shoot the lights out, which he has been doing. Uh, yeah, like he'd be a great leader for Briefy and um, even Mayo as well there over the years. But yeah, he's just going to continue that good run of form because... It's like feeding buns to a bear. You supply the right ball into him at club level, he will cause a break. And no, it's it's um it's been working. And you know, if I think if he continues to good uh, form for the club championship, why not? Why couldn't he do for Mayo? Exactly. I suppose moving on now to the Monaghan Senior Football Championship semi-finals. Probably the game at the weekend involved in a scheme and uh, Bally Bay Pierce's um. Bally Bay up two six to five points at half time. Then in within ten minutes after half time, in a skiing hit um, one seven. Andrew Woods with one one day. Then uh, Charlie McGuinness replies with a goal. They go two ahead, and then Megan replies with two scores uh, to bring the game to extra time. But like the job Ushi McConville has done with this in a skiing team, Joe Sheridan, it's phenomenal. Like they weren't really in the top four within Monaghan. They knocked out Clon Tibbers. They knocked out Mara Clune and they had Bally Bay really, but only for a goal in extra time and one or two points from Paul Finley really sealing the win for Bally Bay. But uh, McConville's done a serious job, like to come from seven points down to get your side back into the game is just showing that he has that belief uh, growing within the in scheme players. 
Yeah, and I had a bit of personal relationship with him because he was our, our co-manager last year with our own club. Um, so he was trying to, he, he'd been with us for two years and he, he just moved on. Obviously, it was a bit of a drive down the road. So in the skiing, he's only over the road from him. And uh, yeah, we got on well with him. We got to a relegation battle last year. That's the only problem. So we didn't <laughs> with him. But no, he was very good and his ideas. We're probably in a transition with players and stuff at the minute. But yeah, no, what he's done, we actually played him in the challenge at the beginning of the year. Um, and they were very well set up. They actually they beat us quite well now in the end. Um, they scored four goals against us, and, and, and they do what 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 Oshin sets up is he likes to sort of defend in packs. So you know, try and have everyone working as hard as possible, attack at pace. Then when we turn when they turn over the ball, to try and move that ball up to the, up through the pitch and um, obviously keep possession the right way. Uh, but yeah, you could see that, and it's his only his first year. Uh, it's only his first year with them this year, so it just shows that it, the boys are buying into it, and it's, it's had a massive effect on on the way that the, the team has been playing. And yeah, no, it was very unlucky for them you know, to go to extra time and the type of play they actually play. It's it's high intensity. It's you know three or four lads around a man, and you know I, I'd imagine that probably maybe just was the undoing of them towards the end of the game when um, Bally Bay just got on top a wee bit and in, in extra time, so. It's um it's unlucky, but it, it's a great stepping stone for them going next year. Obviously, only been senior a year, a couple of years, you know. So it's a it's a, it's a it's a fair achievement to get to a semi final already. And could you see McConville succeeding at inter county management if he's going to the job? Oh, you could, yeah, yeah. Oshin is a great way about him, great way with players, a great rapport with players. He treats them with, with great respect, and he's um he's uh, the players obviously all respect him for what he's done. So. He's um he's obviously just putting his dipping his toe in uh to club management at the minute and he's obviously busy enough with his his uh, you know career in the uh, as an analyst with um RT and also BBC so he, I'm sure he's just trying to figure out what's the best way to go for him and if uh, in the county career or management career is is his way to go so I I'd imagine he he has thought of it and he's probably is thinking about it um. He'll do well to get McGinney out of Armar for a few years anyway, so I don't think he'll be going that way. But he's, uh, yeah, no, he, he, there's, there's massive potential for him, I'd imagine. And um, it's just, I'd say, up to him if he wants to go that route. Yeah, and the other results, John, uh, Monaghan Kingpins, Scotstown winning comfortably really against Kerry McCross, 17 points to 1 6. Conor McCarthy on fire, but just the Scotstown spine of Darren and Kieran Hughes, Conor McCarthy, Shane Carey, Rory Began, like Ryan O'Toole played football for the UCD seniors last year. Um, a comfortable win, really, and Conor McCarthy really seems to be living up to his potential because he was on fire before lockdown came and he seems to be doing the same with Scotstown. Yeah, like I think that's another player like that everyone has to really look at from the modern point of view because I know Conor McManus, I keep saying it to a lot of people, I reckon Conor McManus probably has one or two more good years on him. So it's really time for some of them, well hopefully from a cabin point of view, maybe for them modern boys to maybe step up and maybe give McManus a bit of a hand and the Conor McCarthy's and the um of this world, like it really is their time to shine and like the stage is set for them. Like him kicking all the right points, I'm not surprised. Like I've seen that man in minor action years ago and I think we had to put two or three lads on him just to stop him. And I think they were even struggling. His movement is so, so good, Paul. And um, he's just quick as lightning and he'll, he'll score points for fun. If, again, if the right ball's put into him and he's amazing movement. He's uh, He definitely is one to look out for from the modern point of view. And I think uh, Conor McManus uh, might not be too worried when he's retiring, maybe. Exactly. Um... I suppose moving on to the um, Donegal Senior Football Championship, an unbelievable score, eight eleven for St. Ewan's to Bunt Orange, six points, two two from Niall O'Donnell, one one for Caelan Ward, Port McGettigan with one two as well, but eight eleven is some scoring job. Yeah, no matter where you look at it and no matter how bad the other team are, it's it's, it's phenomenal scoring in, in in any senior championship game. So it's um yeah. I wouldn't like to be playing the team. Where I, I haven't seen the draw there yet, but I don't know who they're playing in the semi final. I wouldn't like to see um, because that, that'll just give you massive confidence. And hopefully, they don't be sucked into it too much because they'll have to obviously be brought back down to earth after su have such a win and, and obviously focus on the semi final. So it, it's up to their management to try and get their players back back down to the 
to the land of the living and um, realise that you're not going to score 8-11 every game. So it's um, it's a freak score, but look, you still have to go out and do it and it's um, it's very impressive, yeah. I suppose the key thing there was with um, St. Jim's, they kept uh, Jamie Brennan uh, to one point, uh, didn't score from play. And if you keep Jamie Brennan to one point for Bondor and you're obviously going to have a huge chance, but... St. Jude's as well. This Niall O'Donnell has huge potential if he can live up to it as well, Joe. Yeah, absolutely. What, what did he end up with? Did he... he ended up with 2 2 yesterday. Yeah, like that's it's 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 incredible scoring. Like um, you know, and, and if he keeps that going and keeps his confidence going and you know, injury free, um, you know, hopefully then he he'll have a very good career going forward and um, you know, that's that's the main thing. Like at the at the end of the day, a lot of lads are the only reason that they don't sort of fulfil their potential is maybe an injury um, would knock them maybe a crucial touch wood. Hopefully nothing like that happens. But, you know, long-term injuries, that's the only thing you'd be worried about. So if he, if he's on form and the confidence is growing, he, he's only going to get better. So it's um, it's looking good there. Um, another result here, John. Um, Kilcare 3-14, um, St. Michael's 3-12. Um, Colin McFadden with five points for St. Michael's, Michael Langham with 2-1, I suppose 1-5 uh, for um, Matthew McLean and four points for Paddy McBeerty, very central, but staying that Kilcare always were kind of in control, a late goal from St. Michael's and Kilcare obviously haven't won a county title I think since 2017, but like we were saying with Brave earlier, for them to have all the county players back um, before the inter-county season starts is massive for Kilgare. It is definitely massive and I think that Kilgare team, McBrady will only get better, the McHughes will come back and they'll fly it. Like Kilgare are just, they're littered with football and talent but I just have to allude to a name you mentioned there, uh, Colin McFadden. I always thought when he was playing for Donegal and Joe will maybe agree with this, I think McFadden was always very underrated in that Donegal full forward line. Like I think he was he was a good, good marksman when he was playing and I think obviously when you're retired it's probably a sad day for Donegal football. But I think Colin McFadden and still probably is a very, very impressive forward and was all over the years and um big 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 fan of him now so but again the Donegal football championship very like to throw one could be very competitive and you've a lot of good teams there. Exactly. And uh Neve Connell uh won out two sixteen to six six points against Glenn Finn. Guido are leaving it late against Sean McCullough, uh, 110 14 points. But another name here who seems to be going well um, for Sean McCullough, uh, Oshin Gallon with 1 8. Um, he's been linked to AFL trials as well. Um, Key Mulligan kicking the winner. But Oshin Gallon is another player who could be frightening. Like the forward pick Donegal have is actually scary enough, Joe, when you think about it. Yeah, they have. And it was funny, I only just saw something online this morning. Um... But we know that the lad went down and their free take was actually on the sideline and they got him on. It was the last kick of the ball and they got him on just before the free was taken. So it was quick thinking and it was obviously the, the right move. So it's, um, oh yeah, and, and to be fair, you know, when you look at Donegal um, and the players that they have, they're all very fast, very light, um, very skillful players. Um, they're, it, they remind me actually quite a lot of the cabin forwards. They're very silky, sk skillful players. Um, and, and they just want to play football, to be honest, and uh, very honest types of players. And um, at the minute, Donegal have a lot of them coming through, and it's um, it's going to be interesting to see how how they actually go when the championship starts because they look like they they've been coming back um, from a couple of years ago and, and getting their confidence back as a team and, and getting a good squad of players together. So um, it'd be interesting to see. Moving on to the Ross Common Senior Football Club Championships and the game on TG Carr yesterday. Port Pierce is 111, Clonagale 110. Uh, Pat Flanagan then over Port Pierce is Liam Kearns over Clonagale. Um, Clonagale did have a chance at the end, but it just came up short. But that man again, Donny Shine, um, the veteran really for Clonagale coming off the bench with 1 2. But heartbreaking really for Clonagale to lose that, lose that way, Joe. Yeah, it was, it was it was quite a good game. It was tight enough. Um, Port Pierce has always looked like they were going to win the game, and they probably just sat back a wee bit and gave Clonagh a, a bit of a chance to try and get back into it. I did see that chance at the end, and um, it was sort of probably the wrong man in the wrong position getting the ball, and just swung the leg from outside the fifty. And it looked that he had to take a shot. The, the, the time was up, so he, to be fair, he still he he had the confidence to 
to go and try and get get his team a result. But um, it, it was a decent game, but it just looked like that Port Pierce has had had that upper hand on them the whole time. They were it seemed like any time they wanted to get a score, they could, and it was just they, they probably should have won by more in the end. But it was um, it, it was a tight game, and it was um, it, it'd be interesting to see. I don't. Will they put it, put it up to Bridges in the final? That's another thing. It's uh, Bridges are quite strong and and, and will be. So it's uh, it'd be interesting to see if if Paul Pierce can give him a good round. Yeah, Bridges winning there two fifteen two nine against Boyle. Um, such a young Bridges team. Like um, from the Bridges team, they were getting to the final finals. Not many of them left. And just kind of before the championship, they lost Ian and Sen and Gilbride, and they've been really shooting the lights out. Like it's it's so impressive, but it's not surprising as well because they they focus so much on underage and they have a lot of underage talent coming through. But to lose the two Gilbrides and still be in a county final just shows the strength and depth of them. Absolutely, you know, and it, it's ma- n- nearly just with a, with a club like that, it's tr- tradition. It's like Cross McGlen and, and these teams that come up here. Your underage lads are brought in, and it, it's just what's expected of them. It's not a big who are and for are about what's meant to be done. It's like this is what's accepted and expected from every player that puts the jersey on. It seems like the young players coming through Bridges is exactly the same, and they're just picking up the mantle from the, the older lads who've moved on. And it's um, it's obviously a fantastic setup that they have in the club, and they've coached very well. And we've obviously seen over the years how success, successful they've been, but. Without the big names to be able to do that as well as, as young players coming up, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, um, I just want to touch on something here, lads, for both the um, six days away from inter county training resuming um, for the championship. Um, I suppose we'll start with you, John, and then Joe can come in. But like, it's hard to know now will inter county managers be taking the county players who are still involved with clubs off. More than likely they will, if you're a Donegal or Tyrone and you're playing in the first round, you're going to want all your players training up till October for the first round. Mm. Yeah, like I think the general opinion seems to be the county set up, I think I was talking to Oshin Langan there last week, he was saying a lot of uh, county lads are actually interested in coming back to play on the county set up and, you know, even down here in Cavan, if you take some of the, uh, we're, we're uh, down at the latter stages of the championship now, if you take some of them lads away in, to play for the county, the clubs will be given out and it it might not sit too well and definitely with the Calvin Gales of this world and the big clubs down here, like if some of the county boys have to leave, their chances might be a bit um, squandered but I don't know, I think the general consensus is that some of the players are just maybe happy to be playing with the club and enjoying the bit of uh, games at the weekend and maybe just taking it handy during the week um, I think the county set up at this time of year, pitch has been a bit Dogged and bits and pieces. I, I don't know if it would be too uh, enjoyable, um, but some might, some lads might like it. But training in late October, late November, it could be tight going for a lot of lads, Paul. Yeah, and Joe, I suppose, can you see inter county managers taking, say, club players who are still involved back and putting them back training? And I suppose, can you see an inter county season going ahead? At the minute, I can, yeah. It, it seems like there's a big push, especially from the GEA, to try and get things back up and running. and uh, I'd, I'd say there'll be a lot of lobbying from the GA to try and get the, the gates open and the crowds in as well to allow some sort of spectators to the game. So it'll be interesting to see how, how that, what comes of that. But it's um, like, it, to be honest, it depends on the manager because some managers have no problem and, and the, they'll leave the players and they'll allow them to the very last minute to come back in. No issue there. And then there's other managers will maybe feel pressure. Uh, they might need to need to do an extra bit, and uh, they'll always have that, and that's they'll do that every year. Not this year; it'll be another year and two years down the line, and that that's just the way it is. I remember under Sean Boyle and Sean never took us away from the clubs. We played every league game, we trained, you know, and there was no issue there. And other managers wouldn't allow us to play even a league game, you know. So it's, it's it all depends on the different types of managers, but I I, I can see. Obviously, with, with the short window, um, see, at the, at the end of the day, most independent players now, if they're all in great shape, they're not going to lose very much fitness, um, especially when you're playing with your club week in, week out. Like, it's nearly, if it's not every week, it's every second week. So, it's literally pretty intense anyway. So, I, I, I can't see an issue with, with managers having to get the players overly fit and having to go into pre-season training. It'd be more nearly just getting them back 
into a routine, into the play, into the setup again. You know, working on systems that they're looking at for the for the upcoming championship, and and that that's what I'd be seeing more so rather than having to get lads in to slog them on the pitch. It'd be more about getting them in back and used to the surroundings and and try and get sort of you know even your um, video work and your analysis done and, and where they're going and, and and obviously looking at the first round of the championship that they they'll be, they'll be, whoever they'll be playing. Yeah, and I suppose, do you think this is a window that could work? Because I think anyways, it's great to see the club players getting the recognition they deserve. Like some of the games we've seen on TV over the last few weekends have been fantastic, really. Like, And it's great to see. And if one thing, it could really stop players from going away every summer and clubs losing them as well. Yeah, and it's it's it is great. Now, to be fair, you you're seeing a lot of players, club players that might not be on the county team or on our on TG Car or RT ever, and you know they're getting great um, they're getting great coverage. And you know, to be fair, the the stations are covering it, which is great. So it, we we're getting to see a lot of good football. Um, and look, it's unfortunate that it had to be forced on us, but it, it, now it's there, and I think people are opening their eyes um, to maybe this could be an option going forward. And, the reduced window on sort of an inter-county career that used to be 10 months and now you could look at reducing it back to maybe four or five months and then put your your club window in there for another three months and at least it's all finished and you've got some sort of a close season you're talking about playing welfare it's, that's what it's all about this cracker lads having to play for 12 months all year round and not expecting any breaks and you know and that's that's the reality of it and that's what happens to players and i've done it myself you, you go from one year your club goes well, you're into a length of championship, next thing you come back, you might have a week off, two weeks off at max, and you're into the into county career straight away into pre-season training with the with the county. So it's um it's gonna be interesting and I know the GPA are, are looking into things and um a plan going forward and, and seeing where we can go from here and hopefully some sort of plan can be put forward. GA and GPA can come together even with the CPA and, and try and work together for the best of the players because at the end of the day the players are the ones that, you know, who are on the pitch and, and working and, and they've been put through all these games and, and this fix, fixture fiasco that we've had over the last couple of years. So it, hopefully for the for the good of everyone and the good of the game, um, we can sort something out going forward. And would you find it hard, say, if you're coming back from, say, the county to the club, like it's obviously very tough. Would you find it hard, say, after a tough county season to give your all for the club then? No, I, I used to love it. It used to be great. It would nearly release. The pressure isn't as high as when you're involved with the county squad. You can nearly just take the shackles off. And, you know, at the end of the day, most of your county players are coming back as their main players on the team. So they feel that they have to drive things on and, and, and be sort of the example coming from, from an inter county squad. You have depth. There's a different standards, obviously, from inter county teams to club teams. So you've try, got to try and bring that into your club team and, you know, drive things on with players that maybe aren't used to that. and you know, give a good account of yourself because at the end of the day, you play for your club at first and then your county comes after that. So it's about putting yourself there and, and committing to your, your club as much as you do to your county. And that's the most important thing. And John, would you agree along similar lines? Do you think this is a window that could work? Yeah, like definitely so. Like even just to make the county scene that bit more enjoyable because like if so many lads are stepping away and saying, oh yeah, not interested, I want to do other things with my life. Like even like lads do love playing for the club and going back to the club and as Joe said that's where it starts and finishes so you know I think there definitely isn't a window for it and I keep saying it I think the lockdown might have been a great chance for the GA to just rip rip up the book and go uh, think of a new strategy they don't they don't they don't need to have but you know I think this uh, condensed season would definitely make it very enjoyable for the players and keep them on board because I think the uh, the dropout rate seems to be going up and up uh, every year so. Um, yeah, like I think maybe maybe is it longer the club season and maybe have the have the county season maybe just what well, maybe July August or something because uh, a lot of lads are just enjoying their bit of club action at the minute, Paul. Exactly, and I, I suppose some other results. Um, Sligo semi final, St Mary's two four, to the Strand ten points, Drumcliff uh, Ross's point one seven, to the Strand Hill one seven, Wicklow semi finals. 
Avondale 213, Dean Healy 213, Avondale winning out in penalties and Bottom Glass winning the other um, semi finals. So they'll actually meet Tina Healy in the uh, county final. Um, some interesting battles there. Um, the Cork semi final, Cork quarter finals have now been announced in football as St. Finbarry's and Noosa's Town. Um, Valley Rovers and Do Hallow and Nemo Rangers and Ballon Colleague and Castle Haven straight into semi final and uh, Joe just touching there in Castle Haven. Um, obviously, Michael Brian Hurley, Mark Collins, Damien Catalan from the Cork Hurleys and Connor Catalan. Uh, impressive spine, and I suppose to have the two Hurleys up top is a huge boost and to have them first before the county season again, like a lot of clubs. Yeah, absolutely. I did see them at the beginning of the, the lock. Um... When the championship start back up, they were on. They were playing a game on um, RT or TG Car. I can't remember which one, but yeah, they were very impressive. And look, it's like briefly with it, that 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 amount of talent on a club team. It's it's about blending it all together and getting lads in the right positions. And you know, you can't put a square peg into a round hole, as they say. So it's trying kind to of get that right position for all these players. And you know, like, they'll, they'll be hard stopped in in the Cork championship. But it's about getting that right and not taking things for granted because. You know, team, there's a lot of other teams that have had fantastic players and a number of good players, and um, it's about getting the best out of them and, and, and making it work. I suppose you know, we'll have you both we'll just briefly touch on the Mead and Cavan Championships. Um, John, touch to you first. Um, are Cavan Gales really that step ahead of everyone in Cavan with Gareth McKeon? Yeah. Look, I was very impressed by Calvin Gales against Rammer last Friday in that uh, quarter final because previously to this, uh, Rammer actually bet them in a place called Cross Keys near Calvin. Nice tight pitch. And then Calvin Gales got Rammer in Breffney Park and they absolutely ripped them apart. Um, things with Gales is I'd be backing them just because Shawnee Johnson's still going. He's 36-37 recently there and he's flying. Uh, Martin Dunn used to play for Cavan, he's flying there too and as you say Grove McKernan, he's, he's a monster so uh, them lads are great additions to any team and like they've been there, done that on so many occasions and I think it, there'd be a big push on to win the senior, I think that was a big scalp last Friday, sit down a marker and uh, now they're very very impressive but then they're coming up against good Kingscourt team now in the semi-final which would be quite interesting too um, and you know there's been a two week break down here, I think it'd be uh, the following weekend when the games are played so uh, no, that's a seriously impressive Gales team, but um, yeah, like uh, they'd be to be hot favourites, I'd say. Exactly, and Joe, who really would you be tipping to go all the way in Mead this year now? Yeah, well, you're probably looking, you can't look past your toes. We're looking at another team that are full of county players. I think there's seven or eight lads that would have been in the round over the last couple of years, and also there's four or five of the under-20 squad that are there as well, so that they're, they're extremely strong. Brian Farrell is actually managing in it this year. Um, they were ran close the last day um, in against Simonstown, and you know it was it was a tight enough game, but they they got a last minute winner and and, and that seen them into a, a semi final there, and it's going to be interesting because Kells have been there or thereabouts. They've been in the last three semi finals. We're told to beat them last year, just about in the semi final. Um, so it's Kells play Nafina and Ash. Sorry, Kells play. Yeah, Nafina and Ratoth have to play Dunboyne. So it, it's it's going to be interesting. Um, if Kells, Kells are a team that, have, you know, everyone's saying Kells are going to win over the last couple of years, but they, they just haven't got over that last hurdle. So, you know, if, if they can get over Nafina in the semi final, get into a final, they could give them a good rattle. But I can't really see anyone pass uh, Ratoth for two in a row, to be honest. Absolutely, um, some intriguing battles to look forward to and some interesting results, but that's all on um, this week's uh, Backdoor Football Show on the Club Football Championship Show.